Hi everyone, this is Harry from Chainlink Labs and today we're going to be demonstrating a proof of concept of how Chainlink nodes can be used in conjunction with the smart key ecosystem in real world use cases. So in this case, we're going to be demonstrating how an on-chain smart contract can work together with Chainlink nodes and smart key enabled devices such as you know gates or wind shutters and things like that to basically uh, open and close these physical devices based on whether data that's input into the smart contract okay so let's get started so i'll just share my screen okay there we go so everything's on on my github here so you can play with the code or, or try it yourself actually if you want as well uh, we'll go through the code in a minute. So basically, in terms of all the parts, we, we've got a Chainlink node that we're using to basically process requests for uh, to, to the Smart Key API and also to basically obtain some weather data. So the general concept of the proof of concept is we're using a smart contract in conjunction with the Smart Key API and Chainlink nodes and external adapters to basically determine uh, based upon a set of triggering events uh, based on weather so, uh, such as wind where we can actually modify the state of a, of a smart device such as you know shutters or whatnot so that's the kind of general overview so we've got a chain link node set up here we have a chain link external adapter also deployed as a, a google cloud serverless function so a chain link external adapter is basically a, a standardized api that chain link nodes use to connect to any other api basically so in this case it's the the smart key api that we were given and to put it simply it basically just builds up a request and but based on upon a specific URL and some authentication. And it sends a request to the smart key API to either open or close the device. And then it returns the result back to the Chainlink node. So we have a job set up. I think it's, yeah, this one. So the smart contract sends a request to the node. The node sends it to the external adapter. And then the external adapter does the request to the smart key API and then the result comes back to the node and is sent back to the smart contract. So that's kind of the flow of events for that one. The other job that we've set up is a job to obtain weather data. So we're going to use wind speed as, as a triggering event for modifying the state of the device. And in this case, we're doing a simple HTTP get to a world weather online API where given a specific location and an API key, which you can get a demo one for free. We're interested in what the current wind speed is here. So this is kind of the, the result that gets sent back to the node when that request is made. And then the node will, you know, strip out the wind speed and then send the result back to the smart contract. So that's that request there and moving to the smart contract itself. So once again, it's just a simple demo to kind of demonstrate this, uh, how this would kind of work. So we initialize some variables that the smart contract needs. When the smart contract is created, we set uh, an initial threshold. We set the device address and the current status is open and, and the location where, where the location of the device is. And the, the main flow of events is to basically check the weather so this this function will basically build up a request to the world weather online api and sends it to the node the the chaining node will then perform the http get and then the response comes back and is stored in the smart contract so the smart contract now knows what the current wind speed is at the location and then after that there's just some simple logic that says if the wind speed is greater than the threshold then open the device otherwise it's, if it's the other way around then close the device so once again just a simple proof of concept um, in a production scenario there'd be much more logic kind of you know around here and if a call to modify the device is made, it's done in this function here. So we build up a request to the node again, to the other job that, that kind of reaches out to the external adapter and we basically send the request to modify the state of the device. And then when that request comes back, if it's successful, we then update the smart contract to say, okay, the device is now open or closed. So apart from that, there's just some supporting functions that are used to 
you know, read the state of the smart contract, etc. So when this gets deployed, we we're basically just giving it the address that we were given and an initial location and a simple threshold of one to basically just demonstrate the, the concept here. So I've got a freshly deployed smart contract here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fund it with link because you need some link to make the request to the node to obtain the weather data. And you also need some link to when you make a request to the node to basically reach out to the smart key API. So once that's done, I'm also just going to check the state of the weather and the device on the smart contract before we actually perform the function to reach out and obtain the weather data. So there we go, the contract is now funded. Now let's see what the current weather stored is. It's zero, that's good. And let's check the current state of the device stored against the smart contract and that should hopefully be in a open state, that's good. So the next step is we're going to now call the check weather function. Now, I'm just gonna do it manually here, but um, with, with Chainlink nodes, you can do things such as run uh, cron jobs, which basically just trigger these events every, you know, so often you can, you can trigger it to run every five minutes or every hour to basically do this check. So what's, what that's doing is it's going to send a request to our Chainlink node, so let's, switch back here and we should see there we go so we've got a new request and basically that's going to obtain the current weather data for the given location and if it deems that the current wind speed is above the current threshold then it should modify the state of the device as well so let's see if that's completed now cool now, if I go back to my smart contract and let's check the state of the weather stored on the contract and hopefully it's now been updated. Cool, so current wind speed against the smart contract is seven kilometers per hour. Now, based on the logic in the smart contract, that should have triggered a request to modify the, the state of the device. So let's have a look at the other job here. So as we can see, it has triggered a, a new job to basically reach out to the external adapter and modify the state of the device. So if I go back to my smart contract here now and let's check the state of the device and hopefully if everything's finished, it should be closed now. So there you go. So, and if we go to the external adapter that's been deployed and just have a look at the logs. We should see that there was a request that came in, yep, at this time with that device address and it was doing a close request to the specified URL and, and that came back successfully. So, so that's about it. Hello everyone, this is Herman Sadik, CTO at Smart Key Platform. Thank you, Harry, for a great job at this proof of concept. I'm recording this video a few days later and I'm going to explain the process invoked by Chainlink on the smart key ecosystem. For the purpose of the presentation, I have prepared and configured the devices that you can see here. It is an IoT starter kit. Teltonica FMB920, Raspberry Pi 2 and an LCD screen with the smart key log on it. We can connect any device to Teltonica instead of Raspberry Pi. It could be a gate or car interface. In this case, the result of Chainlink request is an animation triggered on our LCD display. I'm going to explain this flow. At first, the prepared API invokes a method on the supplier dApp. After validation, the smart contract saves a close event on the blockchain. Supplier listener handles the close event and sends the close command to supplier IoT platform. IoT platform keeps TCP connection with Teltonica and sends binary commands directly to the device. The animation is triggered when Teltonica connects the processor pin to the ground. That's how this proof of concept works on the smart key side. Thank you guys.